the Planning Commission meeting of September 2nd. There are four agenda items tonight, and we will conduct each item as follows. First, staff will make a presentation. Then, if there is an applicant, the applicant will have the opportunity to make a presentation and remarks. Then, we will have public testimony. We will close the public portion of the hearing and the commission will deliberate and arrive at a conclusion. I believe it's important to note that the commission uh, for each of the items on today's agenda will be making a recommendation to the city council and the city council has uh, the power to make the final determination on each of these items. public testimony tonight we're going to ask that everyone who wants to speak on the item come to the podium there is a pad we will ask that before you begin your remarks that you sign in with your name and address and state those uh, for the public record we ask that you limit your remarks to the matters under consideration that you do not, if you're following others, repeat remarks already been made, that you address all of your comments to the chair, and uh, for limiting time, we choose to limit it to three minutes per speaker. The commission will use the testimony and evidence presented that is only relevant to the item being heard, so if you make non relevant comments, they will be disregarded. Before we begin these proceedings, we ask that you stand, face the flag, and follow along with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first uh, item on the agenda is case 10,000G-10. The applicant is the City of Bloomington. It's a city code amendment regarding animal standards. May we have the staff report, please? Good evening. My name is Lynn Moore, and I'm the Environmental Health Manager at the City. And I'm gonna give a very short presentation of this very long ordinance. And just to let uh, the Planning Commission know, this is the same presentation for the most part staff gave um, at the study session on the 19th. So um, very few changes, but we're giving it again for the sake of the public to um, get a better understanding of the ordinance. And I'll try to go really fast. So where did we all start? Why are we talking about animal issues here at the city of Bloomington? Um, council has directed staff and the direction and the impetus to start this process came from the public. So residents came to council, said we'd like to see some changes made to city code. Council in turn directed staff to research other city ordinances and draft some language that, you know, would meet the requirements and the policy direction they provided. So as of this date, this process really started for most of us back in March. So we've met with council twice at study session and have even held a um, administrative hearing where the public was invited to come in, those with interest in the topic, and give testimony. Um, the other purpose of uh, writing this ordinance, I know a lot of people are talking about chickens, but um, one of the bigger purposes for this ordinance rewrite was to take all the sections pertaining to animals throughout the whole code, and they're dispersed, and they're all kind of a standalone ordinance, to make one comprehensive animal ordinance under a single article in uh, chapter 12. Deals with domestic animals or pets, wild animals and farm animals and how we regulate them. So it's moving a lot of existing code around and making it consistent. 
um, in chapter 14, which is our licensure chapter, you still will find the very basic minimal code language for the licensing of dogs, cats, and ferrets, and commercial animal establishments. <clears throat> Lastly, the changes to chapter 19 and 21 deal with zoning provisions that kind of mirror the standards that we've um, put forth in chapter 12 and kind of updating our zoning standards from, you know, what, what once was Bloomington as an agricultural uh, community when we had a lot of farms to now a suburban community where agriculture is more of a limited nature and we just need to update some of those, those codes. So let's just review real quick the six new divisions of Chapter 12. Under general provisions, we have one standard set of definitions that is consistent throughout the whole city code now. Um, a lot of the other issues under general provisions are existing code requirements. We've just moved to this section. Domestic animals, um, you're going to find in this section um, um, discussion of number of animals you can keep as pets, shelter requirements, and we changed dangerous dog to dangerous animal, which is more consistent with how a lot of communities are treating and um, applying the state statutes on this. Uh, rabies control, quite honestly, we didn't change any of this other than to move it and reformat it. It's still all the state code requirements. Um, farm animals, this is what, and, and, and poultry and chickens, this is what most people are interested in and we receive the most amount of comment on. And just for your reference and for the public, this starts on uh, chapter, page 18 of the ordinance draft provided in the agenda. So if you want to go there and look at page 18, I'm going to come back and summarize some of that in a minute. Wild animals, once again, we just moved the existing uh, regulations we had in chapter 14 to 12. And then lastly, we wrote a new section on um, how to do enforcement and inspections and kind of um, divide the duties among staff on how we're going to carry out these new regulations. So it was a necessary uh, new division. So let's talk about um, some key definitions or changes. Um, you'll see that domestic animals or what we like to refer to as pets is much more specific and detailed once again, mirroring some other communities in the state. Um, another key thing is to recognize the difference between a shelter and enclosure. These words were used interchangeably in our existing code and get confusing. But now, when we're talking about enclosure, we're really talking about that fenced-in area where the animals are outside. And the shelter is really where they're kept to be protected from the elements. Um, farm animal, much more detailed. Um, definition than what we have in the current code and farm poultry same thing all right um, we're gonna go through just one section because this is primarily what the public um, has been very interested in is developing standards for the keeping of chickens on smaller residential lots so in the general provisions under section 12.115 once again this is page 18 we're talking about allowing up to four chickens, hen chickens, no roosters. Um, owners have to live. You can't live in a diner and keep your chickens in Bloomington. Um, no breeding, you know, having all the requirements and general provisions if you're going to keep a limited number of chickens for egg laying. Shelter enclosure requirements. The biggest change is currently if you have chickens, um, you have to be, they have to be kept 100 feet from all the neighboring property lines. Um, when looking at that, that really limited the number of properties in town that chickens could be kept at to a very small number, probably likely like under 100 out of 22,000 total properties in town that are residential. So the number that um, staff <coughs> uh, used with direction from council is 30 foot setback to property lines and 50 foot from, to neighboring homes. And that would allow approximately, you know, it's hard to estimate how many properties in town that would then accommodate approximately 80 to 90% of the residential properties in town of single family use would then have possibly the opportunity to keep chickens in their backyard. Um, we have provisions for screening, enclosures, size of the shelter, 
and uh, size of the enclosure. One of the issues that is uh, of most concern is how do you keep chickens and not annoy your neighbors? And that's the prevention of nuisance conditions. So we have some regulations in there to help us say, okay, if you're gonna keep chickens, you have to take care of these things. So dealing with noise, deal with the feces, deal with things, um, don't let the chickens get out of the pen and run at large, things like that, that uh, help us do good enforcement in town. Lastly, sale of farm poultry or eggs. Um, you know, it's one thing to share your excess eggs with your neighbors. It's a whole other thing to sell them. There's state um, regulations on the sale of eggs, and we just want to prohibit that and also kind of mirror our performance standards um, in the zoning code for home enterprises. Um, I just want to point out in conclusion that um, there has been uh, quite a bit of uh, written comment taken um, received by staff in the form of email that we've included in your packets. There's also a supplement where we received some additional written comments um, after the packet went out. So there's been some more that's come in. And then <coughs> there is also a summary from both, um, very brief summary from both council study sessions of council direction to staff, as well as the summarized minutes of public testimony from the administrative hearing on August 5th. So given this, uh, staff is seeking to um, get the recommendation from the Planning Commission. Um, council is looking for this rec uh, recommendation. Um, it's on their schedule to hold a public hearing on the ordinance on September 27th. And the last bit of business here tonight, if there's no questions for me, is to allow some members of the public to give testimony to you regarding their opinions on this draft language. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Commissioner Lucas. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Moore, uh, could you just for the benefit of the public and maybe for us summarize um, what your understanding is from the City Council where their thinking is at this point? Sure, uh, Chair, Commissioners. Um, council initially asked that the City Ordinance be more clear on animal standards and initially Council gave the direction to allow a limited number of farm poultry. So from the first study session <coughs> we presented information that you have in um, your packet tonight about what other cities were doing. So council reviewed that, said like this, don't like that. And staff took a stab at drafting and reorganizing. In July, we brought that back. Um, we found some difficulties that we foresaw in enforcement. If, if uh, hen chickens are quiet, well maybe allowing all the farm poultry with these minimum setbacks like ducks and geese, they're not as quiet of birds, council decided, okay, well maybe we'll just go with the four hen chickens as opposed to all farm poultry. We also discussed pot belly pigs. We discussed various licensing issues. Um, and from that, um, we have the ordinance that uh, you have before you today. So council's um, been very interested, very uh, asked a lot of questions. They've taken a lot of comments from the public. Um, so we've been uh, dealing with a lot of different issues, had a lot of good discussions. But it would be fair to say they haven't made up their mind on this issue. No. Thank you. Other questions for staff? Commissioner Clawson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just one clarification. You mentioned earlier the number of properties that would be eligible to have chickens. Was that 80 or 90 percent? Yeah, we went back, uh, Commissioner Chair, uh, we went back to review what our information system GIS expert, he uh, did some crafty mapping to try and say, okay, if we run a border of 30 foot, 30 feet from the property line around all the properties in town, how many would have any property left to put that coop? And in doing so, it's kind of a, we're just drawing these lines on a map. We don't have the houses in there. It's kind of a best estimate. and using the 30-foot setback, um, we're really looking at an estimate that perhaps as many as 80 to 90% of single-family lots 
um, could possibly have a coop that meets that 30 foot setback. Glenn might have more um, on that too. Well, and just maybe for everyone else, how many how many single family households are in Bloomington? Just to get a number. Twenty two thousand. Twenty two thousand. So, thank you. Other questions of staff? Uh, 